Hello everyone, my name is Arash. Uh, during one of my uh, recent streams on Twitch, one of the viewers actually mentioned that the DME uh, distance that is displayed on uh, Garmin GNS530 units are not showing the actual DME distance uh, between the current position of your aircraft and the VOR DME station on the ground. Basically, uh, his argument was that it is using GPS satellite signals in order to calculate the distance between uh, your current position and the VOR DME and that distance is basically the horizontal separation between these two. My counter argument was that we are actually relying on the VOR DME signals that is being transmitted from the station, uh, the radio station on the ground and uh, distance is correctly a DME uh, separation. So in today's video, we are going to have a practical test in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 using the default Cessna 172 with the Steam Gauge version to figure out if this DME distance that we can see on the 530 unit is the horizontal separation, like top-down view between uh, aircraft position and VOR DME station or is it actually the separation between these two in 3D space? So in order to understand this problem, I have prepared a couple of illustrations to better visualize this uh, issue and uh, see what we are going to test in this particular case. So imagine we are flying at 1500 feet above the sea level and uh, we are going towards a VOR DME station. Using this uh, diagram, you can see that the distance between position one and the VOR DME can be defined in different ways. One way is to just measure the distance between these two using the horizontal separation line A here, which is five nautical miles. However, DME doesn't work that way. DME measures the distance between the antenna that the signals are being transmitted from and the current position of aircraft in the 3D space, which includes the altitude of the aircraft. That's how it works in real life. So how do we measure this distance, which is shown here? I mean, we have a triangle here that has edge A, B, and C. And using this algebraic equation, we can easily calculate edge C. So we have five nautical miles here and then we have altitude here, which is 1,500 feet. The DME distance is going to be 5.01 nautical miles. Now, if we keep fl uh, flying toward the DME, you're gonna arrive at uh, position two, which is going to be basically directly above this antenna. At this position, our distance, DME distance, will be 1,500 feet, which will be shown in nautical miles in our uh, aircraft uh, instrument that is equivalent to 0.25 nautical miles. And if uh, we keep flying away from this position and reach to position three, after one nautical miles, we will have this uh, DME distance of 1.03 nautical miles from the actual antenna on the ground. Again, how do we calculate that using this uh, algebraic equation? Now, in the next illustration, we're gonna fly at a higher altitude and see the, and see the difference. So we're gonna be at higher altitude at the, this, in this example, 13,500 feet above the sea level. In this case, we have uh, five nautical miles horizontal distance between the aircraft uh, to the VOR DME station and the altitude of 13,500 feet. Again, using this uh, equation, we can see that our DME instrument is going to show us the distance equal to 5.47 nautical miles. So if we keep flying towards the VOR at position two, we will have the separation or the DME distance of 13,500 feet, which is equivalent to uh, 2.22 nautical miles and if we keep flying after one nautical miles we will have 2.43 nautical miles dme distance between uh, vor dme station and our aircraft in position three so this shows if we are flying 
at this altitude, our DME instrument will never actually reach to zero. Even if you're right at the top of the VOR station, we still have 2.22 nautical miles separation between us. So we're gonna test this and uh, see that what our DME instrument will show us in two different scenarios. Well, we need to keep in mind that the VOR DME signal is being transmitted into uh, specific angles. That means if we are directly above the VOR, there is a cone-shaped space that we will not receive any signal. And that is being shown here with these dotted lines. So we will lose the signal as we fly over it. But then as soon as we are out of this cone-shaped space, we will receive the signal again after. Now, for the actual test, we are going to use a software which is called Little Nav Map. We are uh, six nautical miles away from Yankee Foxtrot Charlie VOR DME station close to Fredericton, New Brunswick. So we're going to make sure that I'm using uh, autopilot and the weather is basically calm, clear sky, so no other uh, parameters can affect our flight. As we fly, we are getting closer and closer to the five nautical miles arc. Let me zoom in for better visibility. This is five nautical miles arc and this is one nautical miles arc, which basically they both represent those distances that I showed you guys on the, those illustrations. So now we are we are basically almost uh, crossing the five nautical miles arc and we can confirm that by looking at our DME distance here shown on uh, GNS 530. The problem with this instrument is that it doesn't show the decimal points, right? So that makes it even more difficult to run this test. But it's okay because uh, we know as a fact that it is rounding the numbers to the nearest integer value. So for example, if it's 4.25 nautical miles, it will round it down to four. If it's 4.75, it rounds it up to five nautical miles. Now we are at, we are at uh, basically closer to three nautical miles distance. And then we keep going and going. And um, I will zoom in and probably I will just uh, fast forward the video here. All right. So we are getting closer and closer to one nautical miles uh, arc. And as you can see, the distance is showing one nautical miles as well. So the, everything is in agreement, right? Whatever that we see in little nav map and whatever our instrument is showing up on the GNS 530 and we get closer and closer. So because it's rounding it to the nearest integer value, as soon as we cross the 0 0.5 nautical miles, it will jump to zero any moment there we go it's it's showing zero now as we're gonna fly over the view dme station we will uh, lose the signal momentarily uh, if you watch here there we go we just lost the signal and it's back now it's uh, showing again zero nautical miles and once we cross that, uh, you know, approximate 0 0.5 nautical miles, it will actually round it up to the closest integer value, which is one. And it will stay one at uh, one nautical miles uh, all the way after the one nautical miles arc line here on the map. Everything so far is in agreement with uh, what we see in the low altitude flyby uh, illustration that we had here, right? So even at one nautical mile, we, our DME uh, distance is approximately one nautical miles. At five, it was five nautical miles, 5.01. Again, because we don't see these uh, like decimal values, there is no actual way to prove it. But it's, it's in, in agreement, like with that uh, level of uncertainty, we can say that it is all good. Now we are going to climb to 13,500 feet and try to test this scenario. So I will climb and then I'll fast forward the video. All right. So we are at uh, 13,500 feet above sea level right now, going towards the same VOR station, the same area and uh, going to little nav map. You can see that we are getting closer and closer to five nautical miles arc here. I'm going to switch to the cockpit view 
we are getting closer and we are going to cross five net Kalmar's arc and it's still showing at six right now and it's still six and it just changed to five so we're gonna keep uh, flying towards the vr but look at here so at five nautical miles our dme distance is 5.47 at miles at this altitude right so it's actually very close to 5.5 nautical miles which uh, is basically is a point that our dme instrument it, it rounds it up uh, to the closest integer value which is six that's why it only changed from six to five right after crossing this line so that makes sense right now we're going to keep going and going towards uh, the one nautical miles arc uh, we will observe the dme distance here shown on our instrument so as we get closer and closer by comparing these uh, values right uh, from this scenario and the previous scenario we can see that the rate of change of values are much much uh, lower right now we are almost going to cross the one nautical miles arc but it, it's still showing three nautical miles now it just changed to two right that means we cross 2.5 nautical miles uh, the dme distance and we are past one nautical miles arc on our map but our instrument is still showing two nautical miles let's see what happens as we cross uh, the radio station and we, we lost the vr uh, signal way earlier compared to the previous scenario right now we are just uh, crossing over and i'm expecting to receive the signal again here based on what we what we observed over here and let's see there we go now we are receiving the signal again and it jumped to two nautical miles again so it never reached one nautical miles it never reached down to zero nautical miles and we're just crossing one nautical miles arc here right now on the map and of course it's two and it's soon soon it's gonna jump to three there we go it just jumped to three so again going to our illustration here we can see that it makes sense right as we flew over the vr station of course we entered this cone-shaped space above uh, the antenna which we do not receive any signal the dme uh, distance was shown as a uh, two nautical miles before and after this area like before losing the signal and after receiving the signal again it was showing two nautical miles in both locations it never went down to one it never went down to zero so this experiment shows and proves that uh, the dme distance that is shown on uh, the gns 530 unit in this aircraft is actually the dme distance not the gps distance or separation calculated using the satellite signals i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it has provided some values and added to your knowledge if you like this type of content please consider hitting like and getting subscribed uh, to my youtube channel so you don't miss any other future content like this also down in the comment section let me know what you think if i have missed anything any important uh, information here i would love to hear it from you until next time this is arash signing off bye bye